What's up, Ronin Renegades? I am Lupine Fiasco. This is Daily Fi Gameplay, and today's game is against the Terror of Melbourne Dash IO. For anyone who is new to the channel, welcome to the Resistance. What we do here is review replays of games that I have played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago after enough time has passed that I have lost my bias and can more objectively judge my own gameplay. I'll walk through lines as if I were making them now while explaining my thought process for those lines, which we will compare to what I did in the past. We either learn from my mistakes or we reinforce good play patterns. The goal of all this is to optimize and tighten our gameplay in the future, take down paper events like Road to Nationals and Pro Quests, and walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. I am still suffering from real life frailty, so please bear with me while we jump into our sideboard and our game plan. Today's game features my harmonized Kadachi list. You can find this list on Fabry and try it out for yourself on Talishar if you would like to do so. The deck link is in the video description below. While you're down there, if you have not already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. It is the best way to support me and to make sure you see daily Fi gameplay in your video feed five days a week. Against Dash IO, we would prefer to go second. This is an aggro mirror. And while she can high roll us by laying out at least a couple of items on turn one, we would prefer the opportunity to crack at her life total and her hand size when she does not get to draw up at the end of our turn one. We did lose the die roll. That isn't the case. We are going first. We are going to experiment with a new loadout in this game. This more tuned dash IO list is still new. At this point, I have lost a game with Kadachis and Mask of Momentum to Dissolving Shield. So I'm trying Emberblade, Mask of the Pouncing Links to see how blowing dash up works. We are going to keep our Flamescale Furnace as it is an extra two points of life and dash games tend to be pretty quick. I would not expect to get more than one activation out of Fiendal Spring Tunic. And because Mechanologist does not deal Arcane Damage, we don't need Spell Void or Arcane Barrier. Moving into the 60 itself, because we are boarding in our Emberblade, I would like to board out Double Strikes and bring in Warmonger's Diplomacy. I want to get up to 15 blues in an Emberblade list which is what I would be using if this was a dedicated Everblade list. And because we are moving off of Mask Momentum, the power of Double Strike goes way down. It looks like I'm not going to sideboard in this match, which I do think is a mistake. If you look at my Kadachi list online, you can see that in any matchup where I bring in Everblade, I'm cutting two Double Strikes and one Soaring Strike to bring in Warmonger's Diplomacy. I think Diplomacy does have extra value against Dash for its actual ability. That ability stops her from playing items. Even though Dash reads that she can play items off the top of her deck at instant speed, that does not change the card type of an item. Items are always non-attack actions. So if we play Warmonger's Diplomacy and Dash chooses War, she cannot play items at instant speed or otherwise which is really great for us. It reduces the power of her big go-off turns because she can't play items at instant speed and crank them to get extra action points. And she cannot play boom grenades at instant speed as combat tricks. The overall game plan into Dash IO is to race. Blocking for exact damage becomes a little more important once we get down to lower life totals. A boom grenade off the top of the deck representing an extra four points of damage can be devastating. So if Dash presents a zero to 60 for four or a zipper hit for five, and we have the option of blocking exact damage, even if taking a point or two wouldn't kill us, the boom grenade on top might, and we want to take that into consideration. Think of it like reckless swing for brutes. Try to stay above boom grenade lethal if you can, 
If you can't block exact damage to prevent a boom grenade lethal and also win the game, play to win. Don't play to not lose. I wanted to show this game to you because I think it sets a good baseline for what the dash IO high roll looks like. We lose this game very badly. The point of this channel is to optimize and tighten our gameplay and learn from our mistakes, but there are some games where the lesson is there's nothing we could have done. We could have played this game a hundred times and still lost. I do think we learn a bit from this game, which I'll talk about after the video, but for the most part, we are going to get rolled. And for us, the types of players who really care about self-improvement, about optimization, about tuning for the future, it is important to recognize the games where there really isn't much to take from it, where we don't beat ourselves up for any small mistakes because even perfect play wouldn't have gotten us even close to victory. And I think that's what we're going to see here. So we'll review the video. We'll look for our mistakes. We'll look for where we can fine tune in the future. But for the most part, we're about to get lit up by Dash IO. So buckle in because you know the game plan. You know the sideboard, and let's see how it all falls apart. Getting into it here, our Phoenix Flame goes into this card, and we draw up into what is kind of an awkward hand. We will be able to establish an arsenal here. The question is, what are we putting in? We can throw our Rising Resentment, pitch Brandon Cinderclaw to Searing Emberblade, then pitch a Soaring Strike or a Lava Burst to pick up a Phoenix Flame. That represents 7 damage with an Arsenal. We can also throw the Rising Resentment, pitch our Brand to play Soaring Strike, then activate Phi to pick up and play our Phoenix Flame. That's 8 damage, and it does give us the option to throw a Lava Burst for 6 if Dash over blocks. And considering how fast this game will go, if Dash overcommits to blocking the Soaring Strike and the Rising Resentment, I may just look to throw a Lava Burst at the end of the turn. I would like to arsenal it, but if I can get Shuko value and Smack Dash for 6, well that's something I'm willing to do. So we are going to take the higher damage line, throw our Soaring Strike, followed by our Rising Resentment and a Phoenix Flame, and see how Dash blocks. She does get Dissolving Shield off the top of the deck. This is going to do work in preventing the Soaring Strike Breakpoint and the Phoenix Flame damage. Dissolving Shield is just such a strong card. And while I am happy to see two come out on turn one, one from the top of the deck and one from Dash's hand, we aren't going to get nearly as much work done this turn as I would have liked. The Dissolving Shield is going to soak up the last bit of damage from Phoenix Flame. And while we could throw a Lava Burst here, I'm afraid that it just gets blocked for 3 from Dash's hand. We only leak just a bit of damage over the top, and not arsenaling this Lava Burst becomes not worth it. So we are going to arsenal the Lava Burst. Dash loses the last Steam Counter from the Dissolving Shield and she plays a Boom Grenade off the top of the deck, getting that crank. Blue, 0 to 60 here, coming for 2. If we look at our hand, we see that it is really bad. And we are almost happy that we didn't board in our Warmonger's Diplomacies at the start of this game, because if this Double Strike was a Warmonger's Diplomacy, this hand would be even worse. What we would like to keep here is a Double Strike and a Blue. We are not looking to play our Lava Burst this turn, we are just looking to Double Strike, Double Strike, Ember Blade, Pass, which is extremely underwhelming, especially considering what Dash has on her side of the table. I would be happy to take 5 from the 0 to 60 with whatever the follow-up is. But instead, we are just going to block this. We're going to block this 0 to 60 with a stab wound, prevent both the 2 and the 3 from boom grenade, and maybe even look to do a little more blocking this turn. This really isn't where we want to be. 
we would like to be much more offensive on our turn, especially with a Lava Burst in Arsenal. I'm not opposed to breaking Mask of the Passing Links early if it means I get a double finisher turn. But at least we see another blue attack coming out of Dash. We can cleanly block this with our Soul Bead Strike and see how Dash is going to wrap things up. Coming with a Symbiosis Shot, we are just checking the Steam Counters on Dash's items. We're happy to take two damage from the Symbiosis Shot and crack back for an overwhelming six. And the line is Double Strike, Double Strike, Searing Emberblade. It is worth noting that Searing Emberblade does not have Go Again because we have not played a Draconic Attack this chain. So, not that there is much sequencing we could do by putting our Emberblade earlier in the turn, but we aren't going to. We do get a pretty aggressive block from Dash with this Crown of Providence, and it may just be that she's setting up a better hand, but it doesn't seem like she sinks anything. There's no sink from Arsenal, and if she does sink from hand, well, chat is covered. She might just be fixing a hand, she might just be trying to prevent any Mask of the Pencil Links shenanigans. We draw up into an Art of War, which is great, and immediately see a high octane out of Dash. The 0 to 60 does banish another high octane, which I suppose is good news for us, but we are already expecting to get pretty lit up this turn. We have a hand of two blocks and an Art of War. We are really not interested in blocking this turn, so let's just hope for the best. Dash playing a backup protocol red off the top of the deck. Getting a crank for another action point and playing a Tome of Fjendal. Down to two action points, four cards in hand, one in arsenal, with a backup protocol and a high octane. Dash essentially started this turn with an extra item and a high octane, playing another Tome of Fjendal. You can see why I think that we are just getting rolled here and why I'm excited to show this game off as Let's not beat ourselves up about this. Dash playing a Twin Drive for 5. Again, we are just going to take this damage because we really can't block well with this hand, nor do we want to block. Maximum Velocity coming in for 10 with 2 action points behind it and 4 charges on the Symbiosis shot is just gross. We started this turn at 38, and while we are going to do some blocking here to mitigate the life loss and make sure we're getting our block value from our armor, we end the turn 25 points down. And it took Dash really nothing to pull this off. That's pretty disgusting, and you can see why I think, well, maybe we are just getting rolled this game. We're going to open with the Rising Resentment. We would like to try to push a little bit of damage over the top of any potential blocks. Not that I think Dash is going to block. Sitting pretty at 32 life with a potential 6 armor, keeping her at an effect of 38. We can decide from here where we want to take this turn. It looks like... Okay, it seems that I'm choosing not to play the Art of War, and I can see where I'm going with this line. If we follow this Emberblade with Double Strike, Double Strike, we can make the decision to break Mask of the Pouncing Links to find a Salt Balloon, then play out our Double Finisher turn. We don't get the added benefit of Art of War, but to be fair, this was not an incredible Art of War hand to start with, with no blue. And we will still get to deal quite a bit of damage this turn. So we are going to break Mask of the Passing Links, we'll find Salt to Wound, and we get to do a cute little play here where our Lava Burst is our third Draconic Link. So if we break Snapdragon Scalers to give this Lava Burst go again, we can activate Phi for free play the Phoenix Flame, which gets just a little extra damage on Salt Wound. And that is what we are going to do. Dash deciding not to block the Phoenix Flame, which I think might be a bit of hubris on her part. Throwing the Adaptive Plating at the Phoenix Flame blocks two points of damage. 
she isn't even giving us the front half of Foundry Heart here. So while we do deal 23 damage in the turn and we get the Arsenal and Art of War, we do still need to survive. Teclo Core effectively giving Dash a five card hand is a bad start for us. We are at an effective 16 health. And while we do draw into a very strong Art of War hand, we may need to do a bit of blocking. 0 to 60 coming in for 3. Dash plays another Spark of Genius. That finds a Boom Grenade, which Dash is going to be able to crank to make up for the action point that got spent by Spark. This 0 to 60 coming in for an effective 8. And we could go to two here, but we do have the back half of Flamescale Furnace. So I'm happy to block this zero to 60 with Salt the Wound and Furnace. Our Art of War turn can still come together. We would now pitch our Soul Beat Strike and banish our Blaze Headlong. I would have liked to banish the Salt the Wound. But Fender Bender here comes in for four with Boost. They're going to see me block with Tiger Stripe Shuko. This is just wrong. I've just never read what Fender Bender does. So essentially our Shuko here blocks for one. I would be inclined to not block this Fender Bender. Let's take the eight damage and see if we can block Dash's last attack. Going to two here does put us dead to Symbiosis Shock. Dash still has a floating resource, so I'm assuming that we're dead no matter what, but we do erroneously block with the Tiger Stripe Shuko. And we're going to see Dash play a boot grenade off the top of the deck. So whether we blocked or didn't block, we're dead anyway. And that's why I think, wow, we really just got rolled this game. High Octane, Maximum Velocity, multiple Tome of Fiendals, multiple Spark of Geniuses, and we had a pretty lackluster go-off turn of our own. We just got rolled. And I wanted to see what getting rolled looks like. And I want for posterity that we all know what getting rolled by Dash IO looks like. So we don't beat ourselves up over this sort of game. We don't beat ourselves up when we lose to Alexi that plays Rain Razor three of a kind three turns in a row. And we don't beat ourselves up when we lose to a Dash IO who goes off on turn two with multiple Toma Fiendals, High Octane, and multiple Sparks of Genius. I do think, as a result of this game, that I am less inclined to keep trying the Emberblade, Pouncing Rings, Blow Her Up plan. I think that pressuring Dash to block with Mask Momentum is going to be very important for taking her off of those big turns. Or, similar to how Lexi Games went, if she does want to tank damage to enable a big turn, she's going to give us a fifth point of intellect to do so. I'm going to experiment more with Kadachi Mask Momentum into Dash. I do think that Dissolving Shield is a very real card. And while it isn't quite as devastating as a frailty is, on the right turn, Dissolving Shield can totally shut down our offensive and let Dash keep four cards in hand and arsenal where she otherwise would have had to block with armor or multiple cards from hand and that really is just going to take tempo from us. So this may end up being a matchup where Emberblade, Mask of Momentum is the right decision so that we are constantly threatening draws on three and four power attacks and not giving Dash the opportunity to block multiple Mask of Momentum triggers with just a single dissolving shield. The matchup is still a work in progress. Dash IO is still very new. The list is still being tuned. And I think what we saw in Melbourne was, and I think what we saw in Melbourne was something new and unexpected. And it's something that we now get tech for. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, and if you can relate to just getting lit up by Dash, head jab that like button for me. I'm trying the old light setup again. I think it works a little bit better. I know it doesn't have a huge impact on gameplay analysis or how much you may or may not enjoy this video, 
my face cam is in the little bottom right corner, but I enjoy presenting a quality product for you. I hope you're liking the music as well. You can find Nick's Facebook profile in the video description below if you want to hit him up for some music of your own. I really like it. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments. If you have any other feedback or questions for me, you can put those into the comments as well. I will be back tomorrow with a fine state of the game post Lexi, post changes to Living Legend, and I am hoping to see you all back here tomorrow for that. Until then, have a great rest of your day and take care.